The Prophet sallallahu and this is very important, so please stay with me, don't lose the point. The Prophet sallallahu tells us of a man from Banu Israel, authentic hadith, a man killed 99 people. After 99 people, he, he wanted to change, bro. In our language, so I want to pull up, he want to make a difference, I lost him, you know, I've had enough. So he comes to the, it's a long story, he goes to a man, he says, look, you know, is there tawbah for me? The man says, you've killed a hundred, you're crazy, Allah will never forgive you. So he killed him too. Made him a hundred, right? Made him a hundred people. After a hundred people, bro, this guy, he really wanted tawbah, he really wanted to change. I know, I know brothers that are on a very bad habit. Allah, he speaks to me, the mu'a al he's crying from his heart. He's not crying from his eyes anymore, bro. He's actually crying from his heart. Bro, I'm in a dark, dark hole. I need help. And we all want to change. Like, to some degree, every one of us wants to make a move, wants to make a change. Allah, I get it, I understand. But it's the equation. We want Allah's love, but we're not prepared to give it up. We're not. So anyway, the man now kills a hundred people and then now he comes to a scholar. So the people, they sent him to a scholar. When he goes to the alim, he says, look, I've killed a hundred, ten, Allah forgive me. What does he say? He says, my brother, who can stand between you and the forgiveness of Allah? Of course Allah can forgive you. You know, we're all amazed with, but we miss the point of the whole hadith. The man says to him, what? What does the scholar say? He says, Allah can forgive you. But for you to change, and this is it, this is the whole point, my younger brothers, please bro, will I speak to you from my heart? From my heart, I beg you, understand this hadith. We get our deen, we get our lessons of all of life, we get it from Quran and Sunnah. Trust me, there's a lot of people who talk and use nice fancy words, but all of your life, it's in the Quran and it's in the Sunnah, trust me, it's all there. The man really wants to change. He's killed a hundred. And he's asking the scholar, can Allah forgive me? The scholar says, yes, Allah can forgive you. But, but, for you to change, you have to leave your town. There's too much evil there. That's our problem, brother. I really want to change. That Habibi, your mate, he's no good. My brother, we've been mates for 10 years. What do you want me to do? That's the problem. You're not prepared to break up from your mate. You're not prepared to leave the air. And you know, sometimes it may be an extreme thing. Sometimes in order to save your soul, to save your deen, you may have to leave town. Habibi, leave it. By Allah, it's nothing but an area code. <coughs> if it means saving your soul, do it. That's the problem. Wallah, I really want to change. But what do you want me to do? This is all I know. I know brothers that are doing haram. Yeah, he's buying and selling haram. He's on haram. But he tells me, brother, Wallah, I know it's haram. And I know that all the income is haram. And I know I'm feeding my kids haram. But if I give it up today, what do I do tomorrow morning? It's all I know. That's the thing, you can't come to Allah with baggage. Brother, Wallah, I love you and I love Deen. Tell me what the talks are. Well, brother, we do talks on Tuesday. Ah, oh, I can't do Tuesday, man. Why not? Well, brother, we've been playing at about me for the last 10 years. <laughs> well, why do you think it's funny? I genuinely get that from people. Well, brother, we have our family, but you know, we have our family, uh, family, family barbecues on Tuesday, Chef. What do you? The brother, like, like, I don't understand. What do you want? Do you want the whole world and the whole dean and Allah and his brother? What? Do you want all this to change a milk to cater for you? Doesn't work that way. Do you give up what you did? Do you, you're the one that needs to make the move. The scholar is telling him, yes, Allah can forgive, but you need to move areas. This town that you're in, it's toxic. Wherever you look, it's calling you to haram. The brother, I don't understand. Brother, I want to change, I want to, you know. And then he wakes up in the morning and the first thing he does is he's looking at his phone. 
Habibi, wallah, when you're sincere of changing, girls from 10 years ago will start contacting you. Shaitan is working around the clock. But, they, but you're not prepared to give up the phone. And you're not prepared to give up your mate. And you're not prepared to move areas. And you're not prepared to move your al me and I so that well, I can come to the... I don't understand which one is it. Which one is it? He says you have to leave. So the man packs up his bags and he leaves. He says you have to go to another town. There's good people there. They're, they're going to guide you to good things. So the man packs up, he leaves. On the way, on the way he dies. On the way, he dies. So the angels of Rahmah come down and the angels of punishment come down. And there's a dispute between the angels. Who's going to take it? The angels of Rahmah said, this man made Tawbah. The angels of punishment said, no, no, he was on the way to Tawbah. This man's killed a hundred people. Allah Azza wa sends down a third angel to be a judge between the two. And says to the angels, measure the distance of the <coughs> earth. If this man is closer to the town of sin, and he, because he was going to the town of good, he says, measure the distance. If he's closer to the town of sin, then let the angels of punishment take him. But if he's closer to the town of good, then let the angels of rahmah take him. They measured the earth, and unfortunately for him, guess where he was? He was closer to the town of sin. So Allah Azza wa Jal orders the earth to change its dimensions. Is that normal? <laughs> Allah orders the earth to change its dimensions until he made in one hand stand closer to the town of Hud. This is a man that didn't pray a single rakah, but he didn't make a single sajda. All he had was a genuine intention. But it wasn't the intention, it was the fact he packed up. It was the fact he took that road. And that's why, that's why my brothers, if you die on the road of trying to memorize the Qur'an, Allah will resurrect you as a hafid of the Qur'an. If you die on the road to Hajj, Allah will resurrect you in your ihram, saying, Labbaik Allahumma, Labbaik, even though you didn't get there. Why? Because you were on the road. You went that guy that was sitting on the wall thinking, yeah, bro, that'll be hectic, but well, you know what, I'll see how I go. We ask Allah Azza wa to make us of those who build a relationship with Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not take our souls until He's pleased with it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the people of Jannah.